Ann Curry is sharing unique stories of people who are searching for someone from their past. The veteran journalist is back on television with the program called We'll Meet Again. It focuses on reunions between people whose lives intersected and were torn apart at a pivotal moment in world history, like the Vietnam War or the September 11th attacks. Well, the first episode documents a Japanese-American woman sent to an internment camp in World War II. She's searching for the childhood friend who stood by her. I was frightened, and she made everything all worthwhile. When all the other kids were mean to me, she was my friend. And you know what? You feel an obligation to thank her. After all of these years, it says something about how much it meant to you that she stood up for you. I owe something to the children that I've told the story to um, about how painful it is to think about maybe I'll die and not ever be able to say thank you. We got to find Mary Frances. We'll meet again. Executive producer and reporter Ann Curry joins us again, only on CBS this morning. Welcome back to the table. I, I want to start with that picture, Ann Curry, of little Mary Frances and Rako. Right. Reuniting after all this time. And when I saw the series, We'll Meet Again, it felt so you to me. Oh, it did. It felt well, it really so you. resonated when um, we started talking about the idea. I mean, it, it struck me because, you know, I've spent, you know, a career covering world changing events. And this is about how people react in world changing events, how they how they can reach out and do something, an act of kindness and sometimes even more be heroic and rescue each other and how they can help save their lives emotionally as well as physically. And so it just it just resonated with me as something that said, we could really say. Well, your mom is Japanese and your dad is American and you were thinking right. about how the two of them were separate, not in the internment camp, but the two of them had a little separation too. That well, that's right. I think you. maybe that's one reason why, absolutely right, why it really resonated. My parents were, uh, my father was an occupation soldier. My mother was a, a war bride. She was a, uh, they were both 18 years old. They fell in love uh, and, and my father went to the Navy and said, you know, I want to marry this woman. But at that time you couldn't marry a Japanese woman. So the Navy said, Bob, your eyes are starting to slant. You know, Ooh. you're turning into a bamboo American. They actually said that. Ooh. But I think that they were trying to help him uh, not commit to something at 18 years old. So they sent him to Morocco for two years. And he kept trying to get back, and they wouldn't let him come back. Um, so finally, he came back, and um, he went to my mother's. My mother was a, a, a rice farmer's daughter way up in the mountains, um, you know, a uh, thatched roof home, and uh, found her. And then in the reunion, they were sobbing and hugging. And then he stepped away because he realized something was wrong. She had, she, he found out because she was so skeletal that she was dying of tuberculosis. Oh. Mm -hmm. And at this point, you could marry a Japanese woman, but you couldn't marry a sick one. But that's why reunions resonate with you, is what I was exactly. Thinking. And so they, they got together, and yeah. uh, so yeah, that's it's a, the story goes on from there. But we mm -hmm. probably don't have time this morning. And, you know, and one of the interesting things too about we'll meet again, and I, this series made me think about people that I want to go back and meet from my childhood. It's hard. It was hard for oh. you to. to to create these reunions and find people, right? Right, exactly. It, it really is. I mean, you think that with the internet, we could just find anybody we want, but actually not so much. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, excavation that has to happen, talking to librarians and genealogists, and so absolutely it's hard. And it's amazing, these small brief moments in, in people's lives occupy then this great space in their life. They, they fill it with so much meaning and import, even after 75 years. Exactly. In the case that you just saw, the clip that you just saw, these women have been waiting for more than 70 years to see each other. And what's really amazing is that Mary Frances doesn't remember, the, the uh, very tall woman compared to little short Rako, um, um, doesn't even remember what she had done. But what she had done was showed friendship at a time when other kids were throwing rocks and adults were saying bad things to all Japanese Americans at, on the, in, these, in certain communities because of the bombing of Pearl Harbor. And so this little girl on the right of your screen, Mary Frances, she reached out to Reiko. She showed her ways of being friends. When she came back from the internment camps, it was Mary Frances that walked up to her grabbed her hand and pulled her into the playground. Said, and this is my friend. And she doesn't even yeah. remember. Mary Frances doesn't even remember what she did. Yeah. Uh, and so the idea that we could commit an act of kindness that might change someone's life and to sort of have her be surprised by Rako saying, thank you so much. I mean, it was just lovely to watch them reunite. We had our headsets on. We were trying to stay away a little bit back from them so that they could really have that moment, although we wanted to honor that, respect yeah. that. 
I mean, we were all sobbing, including the cameraman. There was another amazing moment when you're with Rayco at the internment camp in Montana, was it, where right. she's thinking about her parents. She wasn't sad for herself, but the impotence her parents felt having their family be taken to this place and have to make a life Exactly. There. But, you know, Rayco was born in America, and she said, I couldn't control my country for my parents. Her parents were immigrants, and they, they suffered so much because they were suffering because their kids were suffering in that little, as you can see in that screen, where they were staying inside the internment camp. And she was going, she went back to the very room, the very building where it happened, where they were staying for so long. So, yeah, I, I think that, you know, what you see is history, not just from the point of view of presidents and generals. You hear this history from the point of view of the common man and woman and how they were caught up in it and how they needed each other to survive. And I actually think this is a story of all of us, because yep. in, out, throughout all of our ancestries, there were people who had to survive these kinds of world-changing events, and it was because of others, whether it was our, their, their families or strangers, that we even exist. So I think this is a story of all of us. It's also a nice history lesson for different events. Mount St. Helens, the explosion there. I was very touched by 9-11 in that story. It's because a woman gave a survivor a hug. She didn't realize, because she said, you look like you need a hug. She did not realize the impact that that hug had on that man's life all these years later. And he wanted to find her. Exactly. He wanted to find her because he was actually in the hotel between the two towers yeah. and barely escaped with his life. She, she, they met at, at the Stuyvesant High School, mm -hmm. where she was a photographer's assistant. And she just saw him slumped up against the wall and said, you look like you need a hug. And she took care of him. She's this young 20-something. He's a businessman from the Midwest, you know, and she essentially took care of him. He was so, of course, traumatized by what he had experienced. She walked him out. She made sure he was fed. She didn't let him out of her sight until she knew that he had some place to go. And so he wanted to say thank yeah. you for this. And it's just so slow. And some of the stories are about true heroism, where somebody actually comes in and rescues someone. And sometimes there are these stories that we talk about, about ultimate just the mm -hmm. kindness that we can each show. Uh, for another and how this can have an impact that we may not even fully know. Well, we know all your kindness and thank you for <laughs> sharing it. Great to see you back on TV. We're going to see more, more after these six episodes, more in. Well, you know, there's been, they're, they're already in, in development, yes. No, so, yeah. it looks like we'll take are, that as a yes. We're, yeah. we're on it. Good. Right. We want to see it. Thank you so much, I think much, you're going to be flooded by requests to people yeah. Yeah. to someone in their lives who they want to meet Everybody's again. Got I, really yeah. Nice. Thank you, guys. Yeah. It's been great to sit with you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Andy. And We'll Meet Again premieres Tuesday on PBS, January 23rd. And you can hear more from Anne in this week's issue of People Magazine as well.